Today on Bets and Badges, we're going to take a step back and go beyond the news media to discuss with law enforcement professional executives and get their perspective what could be described as nothing less than a security meltdown at Copa America, specifically at Hard Rock Stadium. I am Robert Asensio, and with me is my co-host, retired police chief and military historian, David Magnuson. How are you, chief? Doing great. How about yourself, Robert? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Why don't you introduce your former colleagues and these top-level national law enforcement executives? Well, it, it is a high honor to talk about these two gentlemen, and I work with both of them for decades. So you have what, first former police chief, Miami police chief, George Kalina. And you have current police chief, Miami police chief, Manny Morales, two great guys with a wealth of knowledge. Um, call them friends. Yeah, top American heroes. Absolutely, absolutely. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank Good you. Afternoon. So let's get into it, right? What do we know? We had an unfortunate event played out at Copa America, the Hard Rock uh, Stadium. Again, not to criticize, but to talk about facts. Chief Colina, you couldn't say it any better. Let's talk about the facts. Let's put the facts out. Let's let's reflect on this from your personal experience, both of your personal experiences on handling these type of events where there are a lot, a lot, a lot of people, uh, very high emotions, volatile. But what happened here? Um, you know, in my opinion, um, I, I think perhaps, right, uh, experience maybe. Um, I can tell you that, you know, after Mandalay Bay in Vegas, right, that horrific shooting, soon after that, we had Ultra in Miami, and I was a fairly new chief. And, you know, that worried me, right, that, that someone could do the same here. And uh, Chief Morales was in charge of operations. I don't know if it was his idea or someone under his command, but, you know, they, they came up with a pretty detailed map, right, of numbering the building so someone may not... Maybe they're not familiar with the addresses when we use other agencies. Let's put a, a counter sniper team, all these different things, right? That that we planned for picturing the worst, right? Which is my point. Hey, let's let's think of the worst and start planning to how do we mitigate the worst and then work that down. I don't know if that happened here. And in fairness to everyone over there at the county, they've had a million matches there at the stadium. Nothing's ever gone wrong. Uh, but I think perhaps here they didn't realize, hey, this is Colombia and Argentina. People are traveling from all over the country and South America to watch this, even those that don't have tickets. There's a rabid uh, fanatics that that come to these matches. This isn't Peru versus Canada, right? It's, it's different. And I don't think that 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 was really absorbed of, hey, let's plan like if something would go horribly wrong. What can we do? Um, and again, I understand because things have always gone so well, like Mo mentioned, uh, Chief Morales had mentioned earlier about that complacency. Hey, you know, we got a plan. It always seems to go well. I don't know that, that, that they considered that number one. And then number two, there was certainly no audibles called, right? You see a lot of people there very early. Well, listen, maybe we open up the gates earlier, right? To avoid having that compression of, of people, um, and, you know, there was a failure there. I think it's okay to say that. Uh, it's not to blame any one individual. You know, it, it needs to be addressed because it was embarrassing. You need to know your audience, I think, first and foremost. Yeah. You need to know your audience. This isn't a baseball game because somebody may mention to me in discussions earlier in the week, well, we don't. it doesn't get like that with uh, USA playing Cuba uh, in baseball different crowds. Yeah, you'll have some people coming out protesting, and, and rightfully so, you know, for, for the politics at play, perhaps. Different crowd. If you've got to know your audience, and and I heard there were rabid fans, also a ton of hooligans. I mean, you look at what's going on on the other side, in the Europe Cup with uh, Spain and, and England, and fistfights going on. Um and you have it. You have it here too in in the cup here in the in the Copa, right? Yeah. Uh, it's you got to know, you got to know your audience. Yeah. I mean, it's almost borders on something Sun Tzu said. I'm not going to get into it, but you got to know it. You got to know what what's coming here, um, and what the possibilities are. 
Yeah. It's almost like the perimeter in, in, in policing. Set it big and you can shrink it as need be if you don't need it that, but you can't do it the other way around. And True. and what happened is once it went off the deep end, you know, too much, too little, too late. And, and cheap, uh, you know, in the city of Miami right now, you have, what is it, the where the Marvins play, the stadium? You have where the Heat play? Um, you have, do you have any other major venues in your city? I mean, you have the... What is it on on Key Biscayne or I'm sorry on, on the Biscayne uh, uh, Rickenbacker Causeway? Man, you have a lot on your 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 areas that that many events like this take place. But but there is a difference. And how what are your thoughts on on what happened and how so we can prevent it? Yeah, I, I think you approach every event uh, a little bit different, right? Uh, I mean, the ultimate uh, goal is to keep everybody safe and have a successful event. But you gotta know your venue. You gotta know your crowd. You you gotta know, you know the the things that are outside of what the written reports are giving you, right? So when we're looking at whether it be ultra at Bayfront Park, you know any type of concert, Marine Stadium, or a baseball game at, uh, at the Marlins or or the Casaya with the with the uh, Miami Heat, you always gotta be aware. And we do sometimes have a tendency to have these cookie cutter plans, man. And it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, that for uh, for our partners over in Miami Dade Police, man, it, it just went so horrific, man. And I think just what aggravates it now is everybody's finger pointing, man. So everybody's trying to place the blame somewhere else, instead of just kind of saying, "Hey, listen, it happened. It is what it is. We're going to move forward and, and kind of figure it out." Even though certainly looking back and Monday morning quarterback, because that's how you learn, learning those <laughs> tough lessons, you're going to see that there are some warning signs. And when you're looking at the Colombia Uruguay game in 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 Charlotte, you had some issues with those fans. Right. So as they were coming in here, maybe preparing for something. But listen, nobody's immune. We had our own issues when Ultra first got started. We didn't have one of those fences, the no scaling and, and, and no climbing fences. And what happened is we had a large crowd over one, one side of the event and, and kind of gate access and, and people were hurt. And we learned from from that mistake. And we've implemented measures that prevent those things from happening. Right. Which is the most important part. I mean, the implementing of measures is is certainly paramount going back you're going back to 79 now to a lesser scale um it happened with general admission at rock concerts you had cincinnati the who concert they stormed the gate for general admission six seven kids were smothered to death killed teenagers that was the end of it for major con uh, concert venues it was then uh seating you know you have to get the seats and do it that way and that was a radical departure from from previous times and perhaps there'll be a, a departure now. I mean, you know, now you know what you know. And off, unfortunately, sometimes you don't know what you don't know unless you should have known. Yeah, yeah, it's very well said. Gentlemen, I want to hear your closing thoughts because let's face it, sadly, as our history has shown, these incidents, mass casualty incidents, or such high profile incidents are generally followed by others. What is your advice and what are, what are your words to those that will watch this video. Everyone in the audience should know that South Florida has some of the finest police departments and police officers in the country. Miami-Dade police is one of the best police departments in the country, one of the largest. Sometimes things happen. You know, I mentioned maybe there was a little bit lack of experience. That happens, you know, leadership matters. And if you have someone, and, and again, it's not to be critical of them. It's just that, you know, sometimes there's a little bit of a void when people leave. And, and new people need to learn, right, and, and adjust. But speaking in general, uh, I mean, I, I feel very grateful to have the level of professionalism that we have in South Florida. Uh, I'm very proud of the City of Miami Police Department. Uh, they've done an incredible job. You know, Chief Morales doesn't talk about it a lot because he's a humble guy, but, you know, their crime rates are significantly lower than most major police departments across the country. Um, and man, I, I personally feel very safe here in the hands of our local law enforcement. I think that's the biggest message. Sometimes things happen, but speaking in general, we got great cops. We got great chiefs. Chief Morales. So I, I think we all recognize that major events and, and critical incidents are here to stay. Miami is one of America's playgrounds. We're one of the favorite tourist destination. We are the gateway to the Americas and we continue to get bigger and brighter. Uh, more vibrant. So um, I just want to let everyone out there uh, uh, know that we work extremely hard to make sure that these incidents uh, are, are far and few between. We learn from every mistake that we make in our profession collectively here in South Florida. 
and we're here to keep you safe, right? And if there's anything that we can do to help out, please let us know. We're here to serve you. Thank you. And Chief Colina, I know that if, if they want to reach Chief Morales, they just contact the city of Miami. But if anyone that wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? And you can you can Google the uh, George Colina group and um, there's a website, there's contact information, phone number, email. It's all it's all there. The George Colina group. Thank you, sir. David, any closing thoughts? There's no doubt. I think uh, Chief Colina hit it on the head and so did Chief Morales that uh, it's just this is you got some really great law enforcement right here in South Florida, and we're, we are blessed for that. Absolutely. No shortage of threat where these young men and women are often putting their life at risk, their personal safety, putting it all at risk. Think about that next time anyone wants to complain about the police or second guess them. This has been another episode of Bets and Badges. If you wish to find us, you can find us on all local media, local podcast platforms, social media platforms under Bets and Badges. Or join us on our website, new website just launched to work in progress, BetsandBadges.com. To the Millers, Miami Community News Team, Rachel Brunch at our producer behind the scenes, the Miller Brothers. We can't thank you enough. And to you, the audience, couldn't do it without you. Look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.